Christine. I'm John. And today we're bringing you our top five worst, worst movies, movies of Dunty uh, Dunty. We just did our best movie, so you can check that out. Link's in the description. We did this last year and the year before if you need some other Rex. We watched them so you don't have to. Was that, was that Rex or Rex? Recommendations or like complete Rex of films? <laughs> like we're about to talk about. <laughs> I believe the first superlative is the most meh movie, the most, most average, meh. most forgettable, however you want to think about it. Yeah. This year I did it as the most forgettable. And for me, that was Extraction. <laughs> See, you don't even remember what it is. It's a movie about muscly men shooting guns, the man with the most muscles. Oh, the was this one with Chris? Chris Hemsworth. Oh. He also shoots the most guns. When did guns. you watch Extraction? It was a random night. I forgot. That's about it. It's about Chris Hemsworth with muscles shooting guns. It was on Netflix. Guns. There was like a lot of Netflix yeah, front lot of, page stuff. There was like a right. month where like everyone was into Like I don't get why everyone was into this. It's because just like, it was the only new movie that had dropped. I guess so. In it's, a while. It was so. I don't. And we the, were starved <laughs> for new movies for a while. The Russo brothers are like, we're going to make like a, an extraction. Wait, they, they made this? Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to. They're like, we're going to make a universe out of it. Like spin offs and sequels. And it's like, what? why? Like, why are you wasting your creative talents Juices. here? Like, it's and time. this is nothing. It was fine. And there was one cool scene which was like kind of guy shoot the gun. Kind of made it look like explosion a, happened. <laughs> like a one shot, but like that's it. It was just guy shoot gun. Very meh. Congratulations on your win extraction. <laughs> My most meh is more of like meh, not like a that's what's bad. And that is a uh, first cow. <laughs> I'm very sorry. First cow for me was like meh. It's interesting, mm. sad, wouldn't have watched it if wow. uh, John didn't really want to, but it, like, it wasn't bad, it was mad. For me, it just lands in the mad category. <laughs> not the way I thought we'd start this video. I'm sorry. I was expecting a little more to happen, and it was very slow and like it one It called thing First happened. Cow. <laughs> what were you expecting? Like just more stuff. <laughs> I got exactly what I wanted out of it, and more is a wonderful film, one of the best of the year. Next category. <laughs> Most disappointing. Yeah, we're, I think Do I get to go first? Yeah, but I think we're gonna have the same one. Okay, this movie was my most anticipated, my most anticipated of the year, almost, mm -hmm. and that is Tenet. Mm -hmm. And it was such a disappointment. Mm -hmm. At the end of it, we were like, uh, really? I almost feel like we should take turns talking, talking about, about it. this one. Yeah, because it's this both is, of our most disappointing. Yeah, take a stab at it, I'll take a stab it at it. It might come to me as you talk about yeah. it, it's like so disappointing that right now saying it disappoints me that it's in the most disappointing. <laughs> Christopher Nolan is, if not my favorite, one of my favorite filmmakers. I love the way his brain works. Inception is one of my favorite movies of all time. I love the new Batman series. Dark Knight is one of the most perfect films I've ever seen. So I was so excited for this movie with Robert Pattinson in it that Christopher Nolan was doing. <laughs> and the fact that like it felt like it had something to do with time travel I was like oh shit he gonna kill it because he loves stuff like this and I love the way he makes stuff like this work but this movie was the the most lacking in character and feeling I've maybe that I watched this year all the characters were flatlined there was just nothing to endear me to them they had no personality traits except for like oh he stoic. understands stuff and he's stoic. <laughs> we didn't get to know them at all. And the reason Inception works so well is because you know Leo and you're with him and you want him to find his family. You feel understand so his pain, you his understand yes, yes. You understand his motives and his drive. With the lead character of Tenant, all we know is that he like understands stuff. Something like crazy happens. He watches time <laughs> go backwards in front of him and he's like, he's like okay, sick. Cool. <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> hmm. How does it work? And she's like, Don't even ask, you're not gonna understand. He's like, all right. <laughs> Literally, this movie went so so fast that if you weren't at 110% attention, and I was at fucking 110% attention, you miss one line and you're like, wait, what's going on? And you're like that for like half an hour. And then you'll finally be like, oh, okay, I think I get it. And they'll be like, no, you don't. It was so nonsensical at times. And once you get to the end, you're like, okay, I guess this was what they were doing. And I guess this is what they were doing. You can understand it. I can dive into it and be like, okay, this is what he was doing. But a movie shouldn't make you feel like I don't like feeling 
annoyingly confused the whole time. Like, I want to understand the mechanics of it. I want to know why it's going on. And I understood it by the end. But, like, the end sequence didn't make much sense. It was just, like, there were lots of explosions. And we were like, who are they fighting? The concept is, like, people can run backwards on time. Reversing entropy. Yeah. They're basically, like, their reality is they're going backwards in time. And everything moves backwards around them. And it's a cool concept. But it felt like there were scenes where we were watching things go backwards for watching things go backwards sake. He put it on rewind and was like, this looks cool! Let's just gratuitously do scenes where stuff looks cool backwards. And, like, that was cool for me in high school when I, like, discovered iMovie. And I was like, watch me do cheerleading shit backwards. I literally made DVDs of us doing our cheerleading routine backwards. And I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. For a film, like, with a plot, have, like, certain scenes that just feel like they mean nothing. You don't want that. Think about every scene in The Dark Knight where you're like, shit. Like, holy shit. The dialogue, the character development, the action. The action sequences in this, I was like, what are we doing right now? We focus so much on this woman who's trying to get away from her husband. We don't really know their story. We kind of feel like our lead character likes her. But, like, there's no connection scene. Robert Pattinson's character, like, I like the idea that he's been around a million times. But, like, it doesn't settle with you. I watched a couple people review this, one being Jack Howard, and he talked about, like, how he saw it, like, the third time and he loved it. And now he loves it and he's seen it, you know, however many times. But, like, I don't want to feel so cold on a film the first time that I don't want to watch it again. I can understand, like, Inception, kind of, you watch it again, you experience it even mm-hmm. more, yeah. but you love it the first time, too, and you're intrigued. I'm not intrigued. I was annoyed. Robert Pattinson was delightful in it. He was, like, my favorite part of the film. Uh, I'll start off with the positive. The category we're doing is most disappointing, so yeah. I'm going to get to the disappointing it's things. It's because we were, had such high hopes for this film yeah. that it was so disappointing. The concept that Nolan came up with for this movie is really cool. Very unique. When it works, it's really awesome. And it, it's almost like he got too caught up in it. Sorry, yeah. I have okay. so many feelings. I'm sorry. <laughs> but everything added on to that concept to, to make it a movie falls short. The biggest one for me was the sound design. And I know oh. I've seen a lot of people complain about this. I, I'd heard about it, that before seeing the movie, but it's I was... It's hard to hear them Yeah, I wasn't sure. It's, you know, like maybe people were over-exaggerating. It was really hard to hear, to just even hear what people are yeah. saying throughout the so entire movie. So not only are they explaining things so fast with no pauses and just jumping from one scene to the next. Again, maybe he was doing that to be like, that's how time feels, you know, but it doesn't matter. We can't hear them. Yeah, I was was catching like every third or fourth sentence and like half of it even to where you're not even focusing on like the scene as a whole or the story or trying to capture like the big picture of what's happening. You're so focused on just trying to hear words. And there's a scene in the beginning, this isn't really a spoiler. There's a a train station area. Our lead character is sitting in a chair and I can't hear what's happening because the, the sound of the trains is so loud and it's like it this was an inception cameo this is, like this sound isn't even important it's not even like the score it's just some trains and it's like lower the volume please the mix on this is so bad my favorite scene in this was the one where they do that kind of heist they're in like that bank yeah, where they the, have the, the stuff art, underground that the was the best scene cool. but it didn't end up having that much of an impact on anything yeah. I thought that was going to come back around it kind the of opening does. scene it does kind of like in a bigger way yeah. I thought it was going to come back which around. I mean that brings me to my next point is the pacing which you already kind of touched on movie is super fast paced especially at the beginning um it doesn't give you any time to really sit on these concepts and no one's already asking general audiences a lot lot with this concept like i said it's really cool it takes some time for you to to sit on it and figure it out but he doesn't give you that time so you're you're trying to keep up he doesn't even give you time to like people yeah no he he, 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 you don't know anybody yeah that's another thing is the characters he doesn't give you time to sit and learn who these characters are. That's partly the problem of the pacing. It's partly the problem of the sound design. You can't hear what they're saying. What they're saying is going by so fast. You can't understand it's what they're so saying. Brief. For the most part, the editing was fine until, like you mentioned at the end, there's like a big battle at the yeah, end. Again, I don't want to spoil anything, so but you have like a ton of people with guns shooting at apparently some sort of bad guys. We never see them because no. it's it's edited so poorly. They were shot. trying to shoot like the people going back in time and the people going forward in time, switching between those point of views, but you couldn't tell but, what was going but, on. And you don't even see who they're the fighting against. So it's yeah. like, what are we doing here? Yeah, we get an idea that it was like people from the future that were trying to get yeah. the codes to like be able to rewind yeah. and go backwards in time. Uh, like you said, by the end of the movie, you both got what the story was about. Yeah. But, but it's it like, didn't I make didn't any care. impact. Yeah, because you don't care about anyone. You don't care about what they're yeah. doing. And because you don't care about what they're doing, even when you understand it, you're like, why yeah why it's like was okay this I, I get it now yeah but i don't but, care. like it didn't have any emotional moments or impact because you weren't invested in anyone i didn't care if seemingly robert pattinson died 
Even though he was like the most charming person in the movie. Yeah, no, our lead character, we didn't have any attachment to him. He was like so cool yeah. and collected all the time. He Very no... two dimensional, one yeah. dimensional. I was like, where are his flaws? You know, yeah. like where... there's nothing there's really nothing to grab onto with yeah, any of the characters. I... Kind of the villain a little bit. They go into his backstory, but again, it's so brief yeah. that it's like a okay, When we go why into his backstory, I was almost like, <laughs> What is this right now? Why do we need this? It was this commentary and like us destroying ourselves basically it really didn't hit you hard at all because you were already so muddled up about the film that the overall themes don't sit with you i think a really great movie could be made out of this concept but it just it's so disappointing it was kind of like the feeling i get when i'm watching westworld season two like he was trying to outdo himself (laughs) Mm -hmm. so much that he got lost in the big idea of it all it's kind of where he's not even thinking of we're not thinking about the heart of his film he lost the heart of his characters looking at the big concept so much and looking at like oh look how cool this looks and all that sort of jazz his action sequences are fantastic Fantastic yeah. in every other film. Like, I mean, I'd even say I'd even say most of the action in this is removed from everything else out of the context of the story is very well executed aside from that last action scene. Which I don't know, that car mess. scene, I just didn't care. Like, you want to care when... I, 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 see, I, I, saw, I thought when it worked, when you understand, like, how all the, the time stuff's going on, I think it was really cool and really interesting. And especially, like, the art cool. museum was like, oh, like, The art oh, museum was like, cool because I thought we were going to really get to awesome. know them more. I was, like, still learning. It was in the beginning. Yeah. But the more we didn't get to learn who they were the less I cared. That car scene, we get to see it go in reverse. <clears throat> that would have been cool if I cared about the outcome. It, yeah. When I watched The Dark Knight and that scene on the tunnel, my heart is like, <laughs> it's just so well done with the Joker and Batman on the motorcycle. I always think of that yeah. sequence when I like even just think of an action sequence. It's so iconic. And sequence with the kick when they're in like the three different levels. Mm-hmm. So yeah. fucking good. Inception feels like better the better of, version of a uh, high of, concept of idea it, yeah, like this. It's, uh, Obviously a different concept. It does deal with it's... time, though. He likes to play with time. And this was his next way to play with time. Yeah. The pieces didn't all come together. So, that's ten. The next category is the most overrated, overrated. film, in our opinion. I actually had a lot of trouble with this. I did, too, because nothing yeah. was, like, overrated. So I actually just put Tenet again. Even though Tenet's very it controversial. It's not overrated. Yeah. But I don't know what else to put. Yeah. I just wanted to kind of... Kind of laugh at Tenet more. Jab yeah, at another tenet. jab at Tenet. Mine is more of my bias against like the legacy of Citizen Kane, and I put Mank for this just because I think that Citizen Kane is perpetually overrated. Like people will rave and rave, and I'm like, since then, many other films have come and conquered the same things in an even better way. Because it's always the pretentious people who you know, <laughs> like to be like Citizen Kane is my favorite film. <laughs> Mank. It's not really quote overrated, but the way that it reminded me of Citizen Kane <laughs> gave me the inspiration to put it in this slot. Mank was great. The most enjoyable bad movie, and I have to actually Google the name of mine because I have forgotten it. Because <laughs> it was enjoyable but bad. Did you not write it down? I wrote down like what I thought it was called, but I don't think that's what it's called. What do you, what do you think it's called? Wedding reception repeat. Love, repeat, hold on. Oh, it's called Love, Wedding, Repeat, starring Sam Claflin. Is this a sequel to Live, Die, Repeat? No. Because I really want one. It's like this weird, like it is a cool concept. This guy, Sam Claflin's at a wedding and he sees this girl that he had like a really great week with while he was in Rome or something five years ago, but Mm. they never kept in touch. And she's also there. And he keeps doing the wedding over, making different decisions on where he sits at this table at the wedding. <laughs> like, it's like Palm Springs. It's like fun. It's silly. But in the end, you're like, okay. Uh, for me, it was Guns Akimbo. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I forgot to put that on my list. Yeah. Four. Yeah, it was really stupid. It was really dumb. It was enjoyable um, though at times. It was enjoyable. It was really funny watching Daniel Radcliffe trying to do things with guns for hands. It got really ridiculous. Uh, yeah, really it's fast. really ridiculous. It's a stupid movie, but it was enjoyable. That's about it. I don't have much to say about Guns <laughs> Akimbo. It was Kimbo. just... <laughs> so weird to hear about her in this role. No, it was funny. It was entertaining, but it was, it was funny at it was times. Dumb. At times, it was really dumb. Yeah. We're on to the top five countdown of the worst films of 2020. Very exciting. Yeah. Are you ready? I am ready. Coming in at number five. Five.
five. For me, number five, we've already talked about it a lot. It's Tenet. Oh shit, that used to be my number five. That used to be your number five. I just switched it. The only reason it isn't lower or higher on the list, everyone, is that it's not that bad. The least I will give it is that he really swung. Nolan really swung for the fences here. It's not he like missed the ball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. like the ball went past he, him. It's not like some other movies on my list, which were just, just like bad, bad or yeah. lazily made. He tried. He just dropped the ball in a lot of different places. So yeah, that's why it's not. There's just like big plot holes you can step into. Yeah. So yeah. better luck next time, Nolan. <laughs> my number five is Guns Akimbo. <laughs> it's a uh, Daniel Radcliffe. He's on a website where people stream <laughs> people murdering people for shits and giggles and entertainment. He's trolling, and the trolls are like, "Fuck you! We're gonna come kill you!" And they hack his computer and they come and bolt overnight bolt guns, guns to, his, to hands. his hands. And he doesn't go to the hospital. Yeah, he just they threaten him. They say like he's gonna die. Oh yeah, they set one of their murders on yeah, him and they start taping him. them. It's really yeah, tough. it has like one funny scene that I enjoyed with the homeless guy. Oh, the, the homeless guy's really funny. Yeah. yeah, that's my favorite. Oh, I thought him trying to like pee and do stuff with guns. I mean, that was funny. fun, but like after a while, I was like, we we get it. <laughs> His guns for hands. It just hurt. I was like, oh, it looks so painful. Like, he yeah. was like, bolts all through his hands. <sighs> On MuggleCast, one of the hosts was like, definitely recommend Guns of Gimbo. Great performance by Daniel Radcliffe. And it's mm. like, sure. It's a good performance. Sure. The movie. But the movie itself is just kind of like, like, ooh, okay. Yeah. Loud at times. Very loud. Coming in at number four. Number four. For me, my number four worst movie of this year was The New Mutants. Oh, I did not watch it. It actually wasn't as nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. In fact, the first half I actually kind of liked. I liked the characters for the most part. They're all kind of trying, these actors are like trying accents. I guess they maybe all realized that this wasn't going to be a great movie. So they're like, let's just, let's just. <laughs> Fucking around. Yeah. The, the first half again was like, I'm enjoying it. I like the setting and the concept and the characters. And it's a little spooky, but not too, not really that spooky, but interesting, dark. And then the second half just devolves into like this CGI fest of mutants and X-Men. So they got to use their powers to fight a giant ghost bear. And it's like, all right. A ghost bear? What is this, The Shining? It was, it, yeah, it just. Kind of fell apart and just turned into schlock in the second half. I just remember looking at my phone near the end. Like, I just didn't care anymore. Actually, not nearly as bad as everyone was predicting it would be, but still not great. <laughs> my number four is American Pickle. Oh, yeah. yeah, which wasn't terrible. It, like, had a solid first act, and second act got a little funky halfway through, and then yeah. the third act was just like... Jump the shark. I can't put these together. They went in totally different directions. I feel like he could have stayed in this one direction mm -hmm. with his grandfather and like exploring their history and it would have been better, but he went like off the rails a little bit and tried to go big comedy almost. And it didn't really work for me. I liked it better as like a quiet film yeah. with his great grandfather. I think, I think it should have stayed nicer. more personal. It got really big and weird. And at one point they shot big and weird with this like debate. And I was like, oh, okay, if they go hard with this, yeah. maybe it'll work. But then they switched directions again. Again. It was hand. so, it was almost like he wrote one draft of the script and was like, stunts, ready to go. He was just yeah. exploring all these different directions. Well, he didn't you didn't quite the first know draft. like what, he was like halfway What's through, the where point? do I take yeah, this? Yeah, where does it, how does it end? I like the idea. I like, I like the, the first half. Too. I thought it was good. It was like a silly, fun, yeah. quiet. It definitely should have stayed more personal and small scale. Because that was really working for me in the beginning. Yeah. Bummerville, American Pickle, it had promise and then it was like, <laughs> Flying through these. Wow, what's uh, yours? Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh fuck! I forgot so many movies. Uh, well, that's my honorable mention for okay. worst movie. Sonic the Hedgehog. We watched this on my birthday. You wanted to. I know. I didn't want to. I didn't think it'd be any good, and you know, I was proven right. It was just. It was like mad bad for me. It could yeah, have been worse. I don't, it, yeah, I mean, yeah. not that I ever expected a movie about Sonic the Hedgehog to be good. I think they just missed the mark on how they should characterize Sonic. Again, not that I really care. It's Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, who cares? In the games, he's a little more serious. Jim Carrey was good. Jim Carrey was entertaining. Jim he Carrey was always entertaining. Oh, it was just dumb. Coming in at number three for me this year, almost got my most enjoyable bad, huh? and that is The Kissing Booth 2, <laughs> which was just very ridiculous at moments. Like it was very melodramatic and then things would just happen because of melodramatic sake and it was just laughable. It was bad in a way that it was fun and me and Natasha were texting back and forth as we watched it <laughs> together during quarantine so that was great. But it wasn't like the first one I could say was dumb but like I had a great time throughout it because it was dumb in a way that like 
worked. And then the second one was like dumb in a way that I was like, okay, <laughs> okay, this is happening. <laughs> By the end, I was like, okay, you're trying to, they're setting up for a third one, great. <laughs> it's like one of those, like if you want a silly, ridiculous movie to watch, it's there. It's there. <laughs> I'm like, don't get me wrong. I'm going to be like, oh, the third one. <laughs> Sounds like this should be your most enjoyable bed. It maybe should be. What was my most enjoyable bed? I don't remember. Uh, oh, it was the love wedding reception repeat. Oh, the dark one. Feet. Yeah. And that one was like, it was kind of good. That's why it's my most enjoyable bed. I think I think these next two are going to be the same for us. That's my prediction. Yeah, they probably the Two and be. one are going to be I the think exact so. same for us. I think so, too. Let's number, number two, two. On, on three. One, two... Three. Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman 1984. <laughs> what a disappointment. Yeah. It was in the running, but it was nowhere near as cool disappointing posters. as Tenet. Really cool posters. Like, <laughs> damn, that one poster with all the colors. Yeah, that's like everyone. <laughs> yeah, that was so good. The beginning with Kristen Wiig was really working as a foundation. Mm -hmm. And I wanted them to just like follow that journey of these two women together and make it much smaller. And I think it would have worked. Like, it could be a little kitschy and campy and silly and work with like their story uh, what I hated was that like it turned into this cliche thing that like these two women who are really smart and work in the same area there was like this jealousy happening and like she wanted to be like her and then she turned completely evil and there was no redemption like if they were gonna do this I needed to see Kristen Wiig like redeem herself and be like hey I want to rescind my wish at least nothing happened it was the most terrible scene I've ever seen with them fighting and she was like this cat lady yeah. from cats and her voice was like Remember, like the first one, she's like, Oh, ah. I had checked out. I don't even remember what oh she was. Oh my saying. god, I cringed so hard. She All looked terrible. She bad. looked terrible. I can't, I, like, I can't yeah. give a more looked, terrible looking villain. Well, she looked better than the cats in cats. Okay, until the wish turned her into a weird robot, you could, like, really see a storyline between the two of them. And then, like, Rot and Pedro Pascal, like, we had this wish rock. And again, the wish rock could have worked on a small scale, but then it got, like, so ridiculous. Yeah, way over time. And then we had, like, like this fun fish out of water thing with Chris. I could go with that. It was campy and stupid, but I was enjoying it. That was what was making Wonder Woman an interesting human character. And then we didn't hold on to him being around till the end to give us an emotional moment. He was just kind of there along for the ride. And he then really like he just left. It didn't have any emotional impact on me. It was like they were playing all this emotional they music. Did, they did the emotional impact of him going away better in the first film. And why? Way I don't know why they thought they needed to do that again. If they were they gonna do it, it again, he should have like said sacrificed himself but that's what again. he did in the first <laughs> I know but like uh, he no that just, just made me laugh he just go for it <laughs> him, again. like flying up in a plane it again. needed to be at the end of the third act it could not be at the end of the second act it like could not go be like her again. inspiration and then the most ridiculous when I completely checked out when she started flying she like lassoed the oh, air oh that was bad that reminded me of of Leia in the last Jedi. <laughs> she was just like soaring for so long too. Yeah. There's a lot of scenes that went on for too long in this. That Why? just like we're supposed to be like really like emotional about it. You know, yeah. part I did really like, and this was a ridiculous too. The stupid plane thing it was like all of a sudden they're in a plane, they're taking out from the museum. I hated that. But I liked the idea of the invisible jet coming into play, and that was about it. I would have liked it if it, okay. This is what I you've touched upon a lot of what I wanted to talk about, but this is one thing I really want to talk about is they just throw in stuff without setting it up and that's a perfect example where she's like oh by the way i can make things invisible I'm like, yeah why, why not, did she ever talk not, about that yeah before? or again like this takes place in the middle of their like dc timeline so it's just like it's thrown out there to make the plane invisible and then it's forgotten about and she like, didn't even use it later to like do another thing yeah to do anything same as the the wish stone it just shows up at the beginning in a jeweler's shop like have a scene in the beginning like indiana like jones where like they're going to like an or old Jumanji. temple. Yeah, something that that heightens the mystery of this. But it's just it's just in a jeweler shop. It's very. Weird. And then her her gold armor that you see in all the ads is literally just in the corner of her apartment it's and like, like wrapped yeah, up in a bag. Her get it? And or she's find like, it? yeah. What I was thinking about was Aquaman. Remember how Aquaman? I, I didn't like Aquaman, but how Aquaman gets his his Aquaman suit is he goes down and he fights the big squid kraken. I don't even remember. And he, he you know that. it was a it was a challenge and he comes back with the trident and the suit and he's Aquaman. We need a scene of her earning that suit. Like, well, yeah, because she was trying to find it from that lady. And she it's just in her apartment. She's like, by the way, I have this cool it was just metal like, armor. What a like, weird script that they let just go to film yeah. so quickly. I mean, it's just they're like throwing stuff in. It was so clunky. With, yeah, was they so just clunky. threw so much in to try and to like, make it big. If, if they're going to do Cheetah, focus all the way on Cheetah. Or if, if they're going to go all with Maxwell Lord, go all with him. Yeah. The Chris Pine, I don't think needed to be in this at all. I mean, if they were going to, they should have focused on like some story yeah. between the two of them. Something and it, more personal. Character 
story. Like, and don't oh bring, my god, yeah. don't get me started on fucking Chris Pine being in someone else's body and that never being mentioned oh, as a thing god. that was bad. I, I thought that that was the antithesis of her wish. Like she would be taking away someone's life to have Chris Pine back, and she never brings that up. There's never like another antithesis. It's like her power is taken away. But what about that guy? He's in. Yeah. What the fuck was that? There was no reason and to do that. It was either. so weird at the end when he like came out and he was like, "Hi, <sighs> yeah. flirting." Oh God, Wait, you God. just stole his body for two weeks. Idea. I don't understand why this is happening. And <laughs> it's, it's like, awkward. and I've seen a ton of people mention this too, and they're totally right. Where it's like all the other wishes stuff was appearing out of thin air. Why does Chris Pine have to take the place of this poor innocent man? Why can't he just appear out of thin air? You know, I was, just, you know, when she was wishing for him, I honestly thought they were gonna like cut to like him like buried alive in his grave, like help. <laughs> weird decision she was with him and this guy was just passed out and his body was being used as like, like using his apartment and his oh, clothes oh my and... god and like they had the whole like 80s makeover scene where he was getting yeah. dressed and it just felt so out of place if they were gonna go all these like again if they had focused on them and made this really kitschy campy like kind of silly thing yeah it would have maybe worked was... in a silly way another problem is part really of the times it's really the campy beginning. and then they took a self like that really super seriously. campy intro i didn't like that but if they had it could done have that worked. the entire way yeah. then like i probably would have warmed up to it yeah but then they just switch gears immediately and go back so to like weird. serious and they had this weird scene mm. with like Kristen wing in the gym like discovering her power what was the point of all that when like she wasn't even the focus like yeah. she disappeared it felt very dated which is fine to say because it takes place in the 80s but just like the filmmaking <laughs> and just like superhero movies have moved beyond this the first wonder woman movie was far beyond this you know there were so in many being a modern superhero uh, movie. Like, it felt like this was made alongside like the first x-men or something i'll never forget watching wonder woman come out on that no man's land scene and like the chills and i was crying like it was this amazing origin story for this woman we really cared about and had a sense for and like there was nothing like i think they were trying to make that flying scene that scene in yeah, this movie yeah that didn't work at all it did not work at all i was just like what the fuck's going on like why are we in a green skin all of a sudden yeah. why is she flying forever the editing made it look like she was lassoing their plane to like catch up to I think, them well, and it, it i was, think she was lassoing a plane which i don't know yeah, how that it was like, wouldn't she like pull plane. the plane down like, yeah it was a plane but the cut made it look like she was like yeah, trying to catch uh, up to yeah. them and i was like this is Ridiculous. Isn't it like super irresponsible of Wonder Woman 2 to just like lasso a, a plane random and, like, plane? Yank and like, what if something happened? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just thinking of something like The Boys where like the entire plane crashes and now Wonder Woman's like responsible for the deaths of like 200 it people. It was just <laughs> ridiculous. The scene at the end with Pedro Pascal with all the wishes, it went on for a hundred years and I was just oh like, God. what are we doing right now? And then his kid was like the, the whole time He's just like wandering alone. around. I was oh like, why? God. The first thing I would do is call my mom. I love when he lands, where Pedro Pascal lands and back, he's just right there. and the kid just comes running out of the woods. <laughs> It was so disappointing. Like, I and was so upset watching it be bad. I also loved, you know, that scene takes forever where he's renouncing, where, yeah. where he's, like, in the blue beam. Yeah. It felt like an outtake where he's like, I renounce my wish. <laughs> And he just, like, runs out of the scene, and it's, like, so funny. And it's just so weird, the whole concept of lassoing him and, like, through I that. Know. It didn't really make any no, sense. that was lame. You know what I really liked? That opening sequence with her younger. And I'm, like, really disappointed. It felt like it was completely out of place in the it entire have, movie. Um, I know they were trying to do something with truth, and I liked that idea. It didn't thread. No, it did no. not work. That whole truth thing doesn't really come back until the very end. end. And it also, like, doesn't feel impactful. It's feels forced and then they already announced a third one i hope the third one they go back to the a more basic? serious tone of the first it doesn't need to be like Not super super serious, no there's lots of levity but this that. yeah but i don't want this this was campy that was the problem yeah. it was like very and just messy let's just have sloppy do yeah. one villain focus on on that villain and focus on wonder woman don't bring chris pine back we're down to number one <laughs> we're down to one our we know worst movie is. of 2020 yeah, these aren't even necessary yeah, but just for a tradition, oh, so for we'll open these up. God, this movie hurt me. <laughs> it hurt me. <laughs> Move fucking long. <laughs> Move long. John's worst movie and my worst mm. movie are the same oh gosh i was so excited oh, for mulan my favorite disney movie disney got our worst and got yeah our they best did wow this year well pixar got our best yeah it's kind of it's different mulan, mulan. <laughs> i mean 10 minutes in we were like uh-oh <laughs> do we keep watching 
<laughs> you, yeah, it was hours. like we're only ten minutes in. You're like, should we just? Stop? I was like, I want to stop. This is ruining me. But this is ruining no, my memories. We're gonna we're gonna watch the whole thing. Oh, <laughs> crawl our way through this I, disaster. I still I can't understand how this got made like this. I remember after the movie, I looked at who made this, and it's a lot of people with not a lot of stuff on their list of credits of what they've done, and it's like. This is a big movie, Disney. Studios have had certain amounts of success of handing off movies to like people with not a lot of experience and like smaller time directors. Like Marvel has had success with that. Star Wars, Disney itself. But like this movie was oh. like numbing. I couldn't watch it, but yeah. I was watching. It felt it bad. It was bad, and it was just like there was no character. It a, felt like they were expecting you. Not in a tenant way. Yeah, 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 no. In a bad, bad, bad nothing way. This felt like they expected you to know who Mulan was because you've seen the animated yeah. movie and therefore they didn't have to try. At all. Like, it was just like, where's Mulan? And she didn't speak. She hardly, yeah. There was, I was like, she had no lines. And she her was lines, barely there. Her lines were all like throwaway nothing yeah, lines. Yeah, there was no character to her. I felt no, arc no to chemistry her. I felt with nothing. her and her family even. Felt no chemistry with anyone except there was like one, one of the soldier guys was entertaining. It's that like was he, only, he didn't have enough time. No, that's the only bright spot in this movie. It was, it was very upsetting. All of the heart that made Mulan so lovable and the music and the side characters, like all her felt, cool army friends just weren't there. It felt absolutely soulless. That feeling that you get when you're watching the original Mulan, it's the first time you're seeing a girl be completely badass and like equally skilled as these men and even more skilled. It was the first time I watched something like that. And I felt so empowered. Like I could do anything. Didn't feel anything watching it was, this. I know that they were, I guess, trying to base this more off of the actual original Mulan, Mulan tale, story. which I don't know if in that original tale, I didn't look this up or anything, if she already has like those mystical powers of like being I a don't badass. Know, thing. But, but that's they what they didn't did in this. They didn't do a good job making it different. They were already taking stuff from both, I guess, the original and the Disney yeah, animated it's film. It's like, you gotta pick and one in the, here. In the Disney animated film, they already had a really great arc for Mulan, like you said. And in this yeah. movie, they already just make her this mystical, magical badass, badass from the yeah. beginning. So there's nowhere for her to go. It's just really for her to grow sense because we don't really learn the background of that sort of magic like, yeah they just, just throw it in there that she's like well randomly. she's already amazing and it's like the whole point of the the disney one yeah is, was that she is, kind of worked really hard yeah and, and she's going out to protect her dad her dad and her the honor of her family yeah. and so she goes out in disguise and and she has to learn through these like trials by a yeah. fire of, of yeah. becoming a warrior and, and becoming she does it powerful and, that's what and she makes does you it feel so great and, and by the time her. we're at the end you feel you've really gone on this journey yeah. with her and you've grown with her yeah. and you've seen her like develop into you've this you've seen path. her fail mm. remember she like miss aims the, oh, the thing the, the yeah. yeah and then at the end she causes the avalanche and saves there's just so much great character work in the first one there was nothing on top of that, we have the amazing music yeah. that makes it so lovable. One good thing is the arrangement of reflection was awesome and oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, but the score was but, horrible. But the way they implemented it, it, I remember both of us saying like they did not earn this moment when the reflection's playing and she's like riding yeah, I think, on a it's horse and like, it's like no, this sounds good, but, it but it's not work. earned. It, it, it doesn't, doesn't work. work. The phoenix thing doesn't work. The stupid bird. <laughs> oh my god. I was just like, you didn't give us the anything stupid, to make this CGI impactful phoenix and it looks bird. horrible. And people are like, well, they're doing the original story, but it's like, then you have to make me understand that and feel it or else it just feels random and out yeah. of place. The end of the, the, the Disney one, it's it's night. It's in yeah, the capital the, the city. Empire, the, the, the Emperor's, the Emperor's castle, Palace. Yeah, palace. Um, and there's fireworks going off and so beautiful and colorful. And But there's also like, you know, the evil dudes are there and they're fighting. And it's such a great set piece. And in this one, the final fight of the movie is like, first of all, it's during it's daytime. Weird, like, construction and it's like this site, right? nasty old construction site. I, and, and they're like, like falling <laughs> through it. And, and there's like, like lava so, underneath it or something. I don't know. It's so grungy and crappy looking. We're just like in this crap. It's, it's a set for like a, a fight that you'd expect at like the beginning of a movie. Like I think back to like Pirates of the Caribbean where they're oh, fighting yeah. in the workshop. It felt like that. Only this is like the final yeah, set piece. Horrible. Like what are we doing? Oh, at man. that point, I was just like, I want to turn this off. I want to turn this off. I, want to turn this I was off. just laughing at it by the end because it was so stupid. I any... couldn't get over how bad the score was. Like in moments where it should be like ramping up and making you feel like it was just like la 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 la. It was almost.
almost felt like they just grabbed random music and put it behind stuff. I don't understand. Everything about this felt like Disney corporate that's put things in a line and these scenes together and, and squish it and Mulan. shove it out and, and it's Mulan and people will, will watch it. It's not how you treat that's very disappointing. a classic movie like that. Like I, at the beginning of all these... I talk about it like, I know. thoroughly because I'm so sad I was, I was like it. a champion of these live action remakes at the beginning. I loved The Jungle I'm Book. I've always not liked The them. Jungle Book remake was amazing. But Steven they've John gotten... Favreau can't save real lions trying to emote. <laughs> it's just a shame. I really hope that, you know, they have a couple movies left to do live action. They I don't have stop. any. I don't have any hope for them. If they put thought and care and heart into and, and love into it, these movies, yeah. it could be really special. If they made them a little different, like more updated maybe. Like don't use the same exact script. Have someone else rewrite it. Well, they tried to do I, with that with this. Well, that, they did complete, this horribly. Yeah. This is the first time they tried it and it went so poorly. It was almost like, did you try? Like, did you really... Put your best people on this. I mean, I honestly wouldn't even mind if they just remade it shot for shot in oh live my God. action. As if long they as did it was Mulan shot for shot, it would have been great. As long as it's done with care. Yeah. And it's really well executed. <sighs> so this has ended on a sad note. I know. It's, <laughs> it was really bad. Watch the original. Yeah, don't even bother with this. Show your kids the original. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to hear what your worst movies were, but more importantly, what's your most enjoyable bad? Those are fun. My name is Christine. I'm John. I'm Addict Seaman on Twitter and Instagram. I'm an author, and my new book is coming out this year, June 1st, 2021. The link is in the description if you're interested in pre-ordering it. Thanks for being here with us. Ta-ta! Bye. Bye!